When did Kaido arrive on Wano and what prompted his incursion into the land of samurai? Was he invited by the Kurizumi or did he invade as a conqueror? The circumstances of Kaido's entrance on Wano are fascinating and beg the question, who is truly pulling the strings? His name and rank as one of the four emperors was first revealed by Gekko Moria during the Thriller Bark story arc where we learned Kaido was responsible for crushing Moria's ambition and killing his crew. No further details about Kaido were given for nearly 200 chapters until the fateful meeting between Luffy and Law on Punk Hazard where the two formed an alliance and set in motion a plan to take down Kaido. It was here we learned about Kaido's association with Doflamingo and Caesar Clown and the nature of their operation. With the sad factory on Punk Hazard destroyed and Dressrosa liberated from Doflamingo, the pipeline supplying Kaido's army was effectively cut off, setting the stage for Kaido's epic introduction in Chapter 795. Soon after we learned on Zo that Momonosuke was in fact the heir to the Kozuki clan and that Kaido was responsible for the death of his father Kozuki Odin and that Kaido was now ruling the land of Wano, propping up Kurizumi Orochi as a figurehead shogun. We later learned after Whole Cake Island that Big Mom, Kaido, and Whitebeard were all part of the same crew 40 years earlier but that the Rocks Pirates, united under the banner of Rocks Dizabek, was disbanded following the incident on God Valley. Kaido's devil fruit was revealed soon after Luffy's arrival on Wano, and his daughter Yamato later appeared at the start of the Onigashima raid. Though it hasn't yet been confirmed, Kaido heavily implied that he and Yamato belonged to a distinct race called Oni or Ogres during their recent rooftop battle. We most recently saw a brief flashback scene in which young Kaido liberated Albert from captivity on Punk Hazard, and assigned him the name King based on his strength. King in turn has pledged his undying loyalty to Kaido, and believes his captain represents Joy Boy's return. We learned in chapter 1041 that Kaido was 15 years old when he joined Rox 44 years ago, which means he sailed with Rox for approximately 6 years before the incident on God Valley took place. Oda chose to draw this scene from Kaido's point of view as he met Lin Lin for the first time, and the fact that he chose not to show us young Kaido indicates he's planning a full flashback in the not so distant future. The exact timeline of Kaido's life hasn't been firmly established but we know he received his mythical devil fruit 38 years ago when he was still an apprentice with the Rocks Pirates and that he had seized power by the time Odin returned from his voyage with Roger 25 years before the present point in the story. This leaves a 13 year window in which Kaido likely rose to prominence, was captured, experimented on, and nearly executed. Yamato is 28 years old, meaning she was born the same year as Kozuki Momonosuke. The identity of Yamato's mother is presently unknown, as is her birthplace. The Viver cards reveal Kaido was born somewhere in the Grand Line, but this field on Yamato's card was intentionally left blank. This indicates Oda will likely reveal this detail in the future. The Kurozumi plot to depose Odin's father Kozuki Sukiyaki unfolded in Chapter 965, indicating it took place around the same time Momo was born aboard Whitebeard's ship. Yamato was born in the same year. Notably, we don't yet know the full extent of the relationship between Kaido and the Kurizumi clan. Kurizumi, Higurushi, and Semimaru seem to be pulling the strings, with Orochi acting as a mere puppet. We never actually witnessed Kaido's arrival on Wano, so it's unclear exactly how he entered the picture. By the time Odin returned, weapons factories had already been built throughout Wano, and Kaido's plan was set in motion. Importantly, we know Orochi has been dealing with CP0, quite likely behind Kaido's back. As I discussed earlier in the video, Oda is very deliberate in the dispersal of devil fruit in the One Piece world. Even high-ranking government officials like Spandam rely upon their connections to acquire them. Yet Higurushi and Semimaru both possessed devil fruit powers and had two uneaten fruit ready to hand over to Orochi and Kanjuro. If Tama is indeed a Kurizumi descendant as well, this further indicates the concentration of devil fruit powers among members of the Kurizumi clan is abnormally high within Wano society and that this may have been the case predating Kaido's arrival. This begs the question of whether or not the Kurizumi clan's involvement with CP0 existed prior to Kaido's occupation of Wano. Perhaps further evidencing this connection, Tama's teapot, Bunbuku, appears to have been infused with a tanuki zone fruit, and we know the ability to impart devil fruit powers to inanimate objects is restricted to Dr. Vegapunk, who currently works for the world government. This likely means Orochi acquired Bunbuku through trading with CP0, and we can connect the dots to figure out how he then ended up in Tama's possession. In Chapter 921, Kiku described Kaido as Wano's guardian deity. During the annual Fire Festival, Orochi and his envoy travel to Onigashima to offer tribute to the one regarded as Wano's protector. The dynamics of this relationship are fascinating, and thus far haven't been fully explained. 
It's important to note that within the land of Wano, Kaido's presence doesn't undermine Orochi's authority. While it's clear to readers and outsiders in the world of One Piece that Orochi is nothing but a figurehead shogun, in the minds of Wano citizens, Kaido occupies a position of divine protector, separate from Orochi's position of political authority. But why is this the case, and when did the practice of Wano's political leader paying tribute to a divine protector begin? Has this always been a facet of the Fire Festival, and if so, to which guardian deity was the tribute offered prior to Kaido's incursion, and why is Kaido now regarded as possessing such divinity? Wano remains largely isolated from the outside world, which means the citizens of Wano likely have limited awareness of Kaido's background and his standing in the world as a pirate emperor. Thus, it's easy to understand how he has been able to deceive the people without masking his past or his true ambition, but leaves the why question unanswered. We know certain creatures are revered on Wano, such as the Okuchi no Mikami. Does this then mean Kaido possesses some intrinsic quality, aside from his overwhelming strength, which causes the citizens of Wano to regard him as guardian deity? Perhaps either his mythic dragon fruit or his Oni heritage could supply the explanation for the deference shown to Kaido if the people of Wano have any particularly special regard for either of those two aspects of his being. As we will soon discuss, the Skull Dome and name of Onigashima may indicate a connection between Kaido's race and the land of samurai. Additionally, in Chapter 998, Yamato told Momo that the dragon statue kept in the storage room once adorned the entrance to Onigashima. It was damaged by Ace several years ago, but notably the dragon statue doesn't resemble Kaido. I'm going to revisit the topic of this mythic dragon figure, but it's worth noting, because of Kaido's apparent Oni heritage, that he has an extra set of horns. The dragon statue, which once guarded Onigashima's entrance, resembles Momonosuke's dragon form much more so than it does Kaido's, which indicates it likely was not commissioned to resemble Kaido's likeness. Thus, it's difficult to say with any degree of certainty, but it seems the people of Wano have two very good reasons to potentially accept Kaido as their guardian deity. The other question is when Kaido decided to invade Wano, and what prompted this decision? Did the elders of the Kurizumi clan have a direct hand in inviting his occupation in order to back their coup and solidify their own authority? Orochi's plan to hold power following Odin's return was largely contingent upon the threat Kaido posed to the people of Wano and to Odin's own family. Absent Kaido and the Beast Pirates, Odin would never have agreed to Orochi's proposed bargain. So, is the extent of this connection between Kaido and the Kurizumi yet to be fully revealed? Is their relationship somehow rooted further back in history? And if so, will the Kurizumi play a pivotal role in the final act of this battle? We know their deep hatred is tied to an even earlier plot to seize power on Wano, and in keeping with the themes we have seen repeated throughout the series, unforgiveness dooms repetition of previous patterns of violence and bloodshed. Much like Cody Jones, an empty vessel representing the hollow endstate of the enmity birthed by the oppression of the Fishmen, Kanjuro witnessed the execution of his parents on stage because of the persecution the Kurizumi clan faced based upon their past crimes. This trauma birthed Kanjuro's hatred and his willingness to participate in the Kurizumi plot by deceiving Odin and the Akazai samurai. His lifelong performance ended in a moment of profound tragedy as he acknowledged Kanemon as his best friend, indicating that on some deep, perhaps unrecognized level, he wished the bonds of fellowship he formed with the Kozuki were genuine. Nevertheless, Kanjuro followed Orochi's final order to use the last of his life force to animate an amorphous spirit of flames representing the burning grudge of the Kurizumi, intended to kill the samurai, minks, straw hats, Kaido, and beast pirates alike. Much like Hody, this spirit was formless and void of substance, the end state of empty hatred. What this suggests is that the inciting incident for the conflict on Wano lies further back in history, and that the Kurizumi are more than opportunists who seized power after Kaido's arrival. They may even be the architects of this situation who summoned an emperor of the sea in order to extract their vengeance on the Kozuki. As we will discuss in greater depth in a few moments, it's quite possible Kaido may also possess deeper connection to the land of Wano than has yet been revealed through either his devil fruit or his Oni heritage, and thus may have intentionally selected his role in this Kabuki play, if indeed the Kurizumi clan are playing the part of puppet masters. Consider Orochi was framed as the casting director responsible for defining the part Kanjuro was intended to play, and it's possible Kaido's entrance was similarly orchestrated, even if he wasn't blatantly manipulated in the same manner. Ultimately, it would seem both Kaido and the Kurizumi entered into this unholy alliance with the intent of manipulating the other party. Higurushi told Orochi she had been outside of Wano, likely in the years following the attempted coup against the Kozuki. 
It's quite possible she made contact with Kaido during this time, as she proposed Orochi use his influence to build weapons factories once Odin's father was deposed. The question we need to ask is who initially proposed this alliance, Kaido or Higurushi? In either case, both Kaido's dragon form and his Oni heritage suggest he has some historical ties to Wano, which means his strength and military might were not the only reasons for his incursion. In fact, it's quite possible Wano, which is averse to outside influence, initially accepted Kaido as their divine protector based on his intrinsic characteristics, either being a dragon, an ogre, or both. The potential ties between Wano, the Ogres, Ancient Giants, and Mythic Sea Dragon are topics I'm going to discuss in depth in later sections, but what's truly fascinating is the involvement of the Kurizumi clan, who have attempted to exploit Kaido for their own personal gain. We know Wano's borders were open before the end of the Void Century, and that in that time, some of its citizens traveled abroad. Notably, one of the five elders is even seen to carry the Shodai Kotetsu and wear Wano-style garb. Could this indicate the Kurizumi have been traitorous ever since the world's lost epoch? Could a member of the Kurizumi clan even rank among the world's highest authority? Personally, I think this is rather unlikely. We already know Odin's wife, Amatsuki Toki, who jumped forward through time, was born during the Void Century. She told Odin she dreamed of going to Wano ever since she was young, which means her family was settled outside of the land of samurai. The name Amatsuki means Heavenly Moon, fitting with these celestial dragons who reign as foe deities, occupying the so-called Holy Land Marishwa, which is to say I believe the katana-wielding elder is likely a member of the Amatsuki clan, not the Kurizumi. He might even be directly related to Toki. Whether or not that's the case, his potential connection to the Land of Samurai indicates the elders and world government are likely aware of Wano's legacy and importance to the broader One Piece world. The Kurizumi plot to seize power led by Orochi's grandfather was uncovered after Sukiyaki's birth. Co-conspirators like Higurushi and possibly Semimaru were expelled from Wano, while other Kurizumi clan members like Orochi and Kanjuro were unjustly persecuted for the sins of their family. Wano's borders have historically been close to outsiders ever since the end of the Void Century, including the world government. But perhaps this transgression by the Kurizumi provided the opportunity for Cypherpole, at the Elder's request, to gain influence over the land of Samurai. Perhaps making a deal with Cypherpole is the means by which Higurushi and the Kurizumi gained access to so many devil fruit. Kaido has very deep trust issues, and certainly entered into the alliance knowing full well the Kurizumi only ever intended to capitalize on his strength. But with so many self-interested manipulators involved, it's difficult to say which party initiated the proceedings. Did the elders of the Kurizumi leave Wano to seek out the assistance of the ogres who occupied Wano in the distant past? Did they learn about Kaido's connection to Wano through Cypherpole? Could the world government have planted the seed of an idea which led to Kaido's incursion? Or was Kaido a conqueror looking for an opportunity to seize power in a land in which he has historic connections? Did he find in Higurushi and the Kurizumi elders pliable accomplices who could coordinate and help justify his incursion? In any case, Kaido is clearly aware of Wano's history and importance to the One Piece world, as well as whatever intrinsic quality allows him to rule as its guardian deity. As Kaido told Yamato, he wouldn't settle for ruling any other country. Hopefully his upcoming flashback will shed light on what connects Kaido to Wano and explain why maintaining his hold on the land of samurai is so important to his master plan. That's all for this video, thank you for watching, if you liked it please leave a like, if you want to be notified when future videos are posted please consider subscribing and remember to hit the bell icon to turn on notifications. It really helps this channel grow and I really appreciate your support, but most important make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comments.